this is lecture 53 and we are this lecture is about homogenization which is how would uh, we convert a problem about non graded rings in uh, which we know from uh, uh, to a problem about graded rings uh, and ideas which there are some techniques that uh, there are some advantages which we saw in the last lecture of why we should worry about projective space so this is uh, this is the idea behind it uh, this is what we should do or we do or okay so let's set up notation uh, r would be a polynomial ring in n variables so this is where the inhomogeneous things will do, will be there and k is a field and s is a polynomial ring in uh, n plus 1 variables which I will denote as x1 through xn same as these and uh, y. Well, uh, so y will be used to homogenize. Okay. Uh, so, let f be inside uh, inside r. Right f as you as some f i i goes from 0 through d uniquely with f i homogeneous of degree uh, homogeneous of degree i okay, and f d not 0. So, d is the total degree of f right uniquely like this ok. Define f tilde to be uh, sum uh, from f i y to the d minus i, i goes from 0 to d ok. So, this is an element of s. So, we start with an element of r split it into its uh, homogeneous components and uh, where d is the degree now because it is a last uh, highest thing with this is uh, non zero ok and write it like this ok. So, therefore, f tilde so, so this is called f tilde is called the homogenization of f with respect to y ok. So, this is uh, we want to sort of reverse this process also. Let g be in s and whenever we say g elements of s we mean homogeneous elements, but in this particular case to define it, it does not really matter ok. So, write just for the definition right g as r i y i i in some non negative integers ok. Uh, uniquely uh, with r i inside r that is just saying s is a polynomial ring over r in one variable. So, we can write it like this uniquely. So, write it like this define the de homogenization the de homogenization of g is just this uh, yeah there is y to the i here just the sum of the r i. Uh, so, we will denote this by g prime. So, throughout in this lecture for an element of uh, g for element g like this g prime will denote this this object and uh, f tilde will be the homogenization we will we will stick to this notation throughout this lecture. So, note if you take an f in r and we homogenize it. So, now in the degree deficient parts we are we are multiplying by enough copies of y and then we take the prime ok this is f for all f inside r. 
So, homog first homogenize, then dehomogenize, it is identity. Okay. On the other hand, if we take uh, some G inside S for all, okay, for all G inside S, G prime and the prime of Y G are the same because if you if we notice this thing here, okay, if you just multiply this whole thing by Y, we would just get a Y plus 1 here for R i, but that is ignored when you take the sum. Okay, so, G prime and Y G prime are same. So, if you take G prime and then take tilde, we will not get, uh, we may not get G, tilde, G prime and uh, so, this is uh, let us now stick with homogeneous. Uh, it might be true more generality, but I have not uh, thought about it. So, homogeneous okay. and for all G inside Y homogeneous with Y not dividing G. So, what we see from here is if you if Y divides G y divides some g, its prime is same thing as g divided by y uh, prime. Okay. If, if you have a g homogeneous g for which y does not divide, which means the top degree part uh, does not involve uh, y, then uh, g prime tilde equals g. If f1 through fm are inside r, then to homogenize to homogenize the ideal generated by f1 through fm, okay, we should we should do we should take f1 tilde the homogenizations of the individual uh, the generating set and then saturate out y. Okay. This is the correct ideal to look for is what we want to prove. Okay. So, it, it takes a little bit to prove the statement uh, well, to make the precise statement what we want. Uh, the, the notion of what we will do is what is called projective closure. So, we, when we get to that point I will define those things. Uh, so, this is, this is where we are he uh, headed. We want to understand that if you want to homogenize the correct co correct object to look for is homogenize the generating set and then so now this is an ideal inside s saturate out y ok. So, in, in this direction let us start let us get a this a lemma. Let phi from s to r be the ring map. With, that is identity on k, identity on k then x 1 through x 1 through x n and uh, y uh, maps to 1. So, x i x i is mapped to themselves x i is mapped to themselves and y goes to 1 and i elements of k map identically. Uh, so, let phi be this map, uh, then for every g uh, uh, in S, g prime is phi of g. So, this dehomogenization de is actually a ring homomorphism. Okay. So, we will need, we will use this. Let q inside S the uh, homogeneous prime ideal not containing y. Then if you just take the elements g prime where g is in q okay, is a prime ideal of r.
so this is uh, so the key observation is dehomogenization is actually a ring map and then uh, we get this this thing okay for a homogeneous prime ideal so proof okay this is immediate uh, phi of g is immediate okay. phi is a surjective ring homomorphism so therefore image of any ideal is an ideal this is not true in arbitrary uh, things arbitrary uh, ring homomorphisms okay so phi is surjective okay so therefore uh, phi of uh, q uh, is phi of q is what what this is d where are we ah this this is the thing in question right uh, so this is just phi of g g for every g in q that is just the image of q under the function phi okay phi of q is an ideal okay now uh, okay so we want to prove that this is a proper ideal okay so the, it is a proper ideal Why? Suppose one is an image of phi. So suppose uh, one is in the image of uh, is in phi of uh, phi of q. Okay. This means that we can write. One as phi of something plus okay, one, one as phi of some phi of something. Okay. So this implies that one is equal to s times uh, maybe I should just clarify this. Okay. So this implies that one is inside phi inverse of phi of q okay but phi is a surjective ring homomorphism phi inverse of phi of q is just a q plus the ideal generated by y minus 1 because y y my the kernel of that ring homomorphism is y minus 1 okay so this is what we have uh, sorry one is inside so if one is inside phi of q one is inside the inverse image of this also okay and therefore uh, uh, this is this is true okay uh, so this now means that there exists some g inside q not necessarily homogeneous g need not be homogeneous in this thing uh, and s inside s such that one is equal to s times y minus one to, to get an element from this ideal plus an element of q which is g let it so this is a polynomial this is the relation inside s the polynomial ring s let's break it degree by degree so it says that the constant part on the right side is 1 because the constant part is on the left side and for every i greater than 0 the degree i part on the right side is 0 that's what this one says okay okay, we, okay. so what what is so what's the constant part on the right side of course, there is an s from here and then there is a constant part of g, but g is inside q, g is inside q which, imp which is inside, q is homogeneous that is what is used, which is inside the homogeneous maximal ideal, okay, this is the xs, uh, x1 through xn and y homogeneous maximal ideal. So, it, there will not be any constant part because it will be some our s linear combination of these elements so so the constant part of g constant part of g is 0 which now implies that s is equal to minus 1 okay. but then in higher degree so this now we also okay, this is the con this is analyzing the constant part in the non constant part we also see that 
s y plus g uh, s is minus 1 plus g is 0 which means that g is y but that is a contradiction because we assume that q I mean I mean y is g and g is inside q. So, this is a contradiction we assume that q does not contain y ok. So, this is if you if you have a prime ideal that is not that does not contain y a homogeneous prime ideal then when you dehomogenize it we get a prime ok. So, that is this is a uh, we get a proper ideal sorry we have not yet proved that it is a prime we get a proper ideal ok. So, this proving that it is a prime is a little uh, so, I will I will just sketch it leave and I will outline the details the steps in the exercises. Uh, so, I will just only give you the, the idea ok. So, now we want to show that if R 1 and R 2 in R are such that ok R 1 R 2 is equal to G prime meaning phi of G for some g in uh, g in uh, uh, q ok for some g in q then okay, r 1 or r 2 is in phi of q r 1 or r 2 is in phi of q ok this is what we want to prove. Uh, so, this uh, uh, requires a little bit of calculation which uh, it is not very uh, illuminating it is not surprising either if you just write out what details have to be checked and they can be checked and this will follow ok. So, this will be left left as an exercise. Okay. So, this is so we will assume that we have proved the lemma. ok. So, recall that we had wanted uh, to homogenize the elements and then uh, saturate out y so, homogenize the generating set and then saturate out y ok. So, let us try to understand that ideal uh, lemma. Let f 1 through f m be an R ideal. let i tilde be that ideal that we were considering f 1 tilde through f m tilde with y saturated ok. Then i tilde is the largest homogeneous ideal Uh, ideal inside phi inverse of i. Phi inverse of i itself is not homogeneous because recall that y minus 1 is there in phi inverse of i, y minus 1 is in the kernel. So, it is it is in phi inverse. So, it is not homogeneous, but this is the largest homogeneous ideal. Okay. So, this is uh, proof we will prove two containments. So, if you take let s inside i tilde be homogeneous So, we want to prove that i tilde is inside phi inverse of i i tilde is a homogeneous ideal. So, if you just prove homogeneous elements inside here are uh, inside this then i tilde will be be homogeneous ok. Then if you apply phi to s which is just dehomogenize s. Uh, okay. Notice that if we uh, uh, yeah, uh, this is just s dehomogenizing of this thing, but if you take s and then multiply by any power of y and then dehomogenize it, we won't get anything different. Okay. So it's the same as this. But for large enough n, this is inside this ideal. Okay. So it can be written as an s linear combination of these things. And then when you dehomogenize that, okay, uh, we would see. I mean, uh, so when we dehomogenize that, let's go back here. Okay. 
if you if you if you take an element of r homogenize and then dehomogenize we would just get the element back so therefore this s y to the n for large enough n is in this ideal generated by the de by the homogenizations therefore it can be written as some s linear combination of these elements dehomogenize which means it's a ring homomorphism so it is an r linear combination of their respective dehomogenizations but f1 tilde dehomogenization is f1 so this is inside i okay so this proves that uh, s is inside uh, phi inverse of i but i tilde as i said is homogeneous so now this implies that i tilde is inside phi inverse of i okay so let me just uh, uh, just quickly say this once more here phi of s is s tilde s tilde and the tilde of s times any any power of y they are the same okay so we can multiply okay and uh, uh, okay so then after we multiply it would it would come inside this ideal generated by these tildes okay s linear combination of these fi tildes when you apply the prime here which is to apply the ring homomorphism phi it would be phi applied to the coefficients phi applied to them ring homomorphism okay the uh, fi tilde prime is just fi so now when s linear combination becomes r linear combination and that is i okay so this is this proves this okay so this proves one direction uh, this direction now let's take a homogeneous element inside here and we want to prove it inside here so let s uh, uh, be in phi inverse of phi Uh, be homogeneous okay uh, so we want to show that s y n is in the ideal generated by uh, f1 tilde and fm tilde for all large n i mean for some n is enough then it will be true for larger n so this is inside here so we want to show this this is the homogenizations of the generating set not okay if if y divides s since we only have to prove this okay, we can rewrite this okay we can write s y to the n as s divided by y remember this is a ufd so it makes sense to write such things okay times y to the n plus 1 okay so we can we can adjust these the uh, the number of y, times the y y appears and divides s on this factor and we can just remove this thing here okay and then and so on okay so therefore without loss of generality y doesn't divide s Okay, so we have taken a homogeneous polynomial, and then we have assumed we can assume therefore that it's that's not divisible by uh, by it, by y. So now write uh, phi of s, which is the dehomogenization, as uh, so. This is as uh, r i f i some some notion okay then r i is r i tilde prime f i is f i tilde prime so so let's take this sum and then take their prime so taking this prime is a ring homomorphism okay uh, sorry not this sum take this sum let's take that okay this is call this thing s1 taking uh, 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 applying prime which is applying the ring homomorphism phi 
uh, is a ring homomorphism. I mean, uh, you know, it is a ring. Therefore, S1 prime is same thing as S prime. Okay. So, we have two homogeneous elements uh, with this property that their primes are the same and y does not divide s and yeah and y does not divide s. This is what we have two homogeneous elements. Uh, y might divide s 1 so, right s 1 as y to the m s 2 where y does not divide s 2. So, then S prime is same thing as S 1 prime is same thing as S 2 prime. If you, uh, if you homogenize these things, S is because y does not divide, uh, y does not divide uh, uh, S, S is, uh, S is this, okay. that is same thing as S 2 this, that is just prime. All that we have done is to just replace what is inside the tilde. Okay. But this is the same uh, as S2 because y does not divide S2 also. So, S is equal to S2. In other words, uh, uh, yeah, S is equal to S2 and uh, the point here is that this is in that ideal. So, therefore, some multiple s times uh, s is equal to s 2, therefore, s times y to the m is inside uh, the ideal generated by the tildes of the f's. Okay. So, this proves the, this lemma. So, now we will conclude that uh, why is it that we are interested in, in this uh, calculation altogether. Uh, so, what is it that we are trying to do? What we are trying to do is the following. Uh, so, we had spec of R, okay, which we said is homeomorphic to U of Y. Okay. This is an open set inside Proj of S. So, this is homeomorphic. We did not prove it, but you know, it is okay, something. So, now here we have V of i. So, here abuse of notation, there will be abuse of notation, but in this picture it will be clear. So, this is V of i here. Therefore, this defines a closed set inside U i. It is a closed set here. Okay. So, this, this defines a closed set here. This is open. Okay. So, let us call this Z for now. So, this is just Z. Here it is closed because this is homeomorphism. Z is closed in UI, but this is open. So, Z is not closed in projects. I mean, there are situations where it is closed, but I mean, I mean, very, uh, I mean, very specific cases. Uh, Z uh, inside projects okay, is not is not closed in general. There are only some very uh, special cases where it will be closed. Okay. What is the closure of Z? In projects. Okay, so, this is often referred to as the projective closure of V of i in that projective, uh, in that uh, topological space. Okay. Uh, so, this is, this is the question, what is the closure of, uh, of Z? Okay. And the answer is, it is given by that i tilde. So, here is a proposition. Okay. V i tilde inside projects is the closure 
of vi inside spec r when spec r is identified with with u uh, y inside this is an open set inside uh, all this okay. so this is a proposition uh, we uh, the proof is uh, just applications of the previous lemmas okay. so what we need uh, is that so I, I will only just sketch it uh, because I would like to show an example of this the issue that you have to worry about uh, in this case. Okay. So if you if q containing i tilde is a homogeneous prime uh, not containing y then phi of q which is the dehomogenization of q contains i. That is one, one check. And uh, the other statement is if q, uh, uh, q is a prime with the same property such that this is true then q can, okay, so this is one we have to check. Second statement, if q is in progress, y not inside q, this, this is the same as this and uh, phi of Q contains I, then Q contains I tilde. This is the second thing that we have to check. Okay. And for this, we have to check uh, 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 the, the, the basic thing that we have to check is uh, that so to do this, we need to check that Q is the largest homogeneous uh, sub ideal of phi inverse of phi of q. Okay. So, if you check these things then uh, this proposition will be proved. Okay. So, I uh, so I want to show uh, an example here uh, using Macaulay and to see uh, to to show why uh, the saturation is necessary. In fact, how it can easily be done uh, without proof. Uh, sorry, the, the, okay, so this is the example. The, you can ignore this if you start the, if you start your Macaulay session afresh uh, at this point, you can ignore this. This is to restart the Macaulay session. I, I wanted to forget what the x, y, z were. Okay, so now redefine everything. That, that's just a restart, you can ignore this input and this output if you are going to start a fresh a new session. So, S is the polynomial ring in 5 variables and uh, 6 variables x1 to x5 and a z and uh, we, I, I, we use monomial order g lex because uh, we want to see some uh, uh, we want to see be able to see an issue. Okay. So, now let us take, uh, uh, take an ideal x1 x2 squared minus sorry uh, x1 x2 square minus x3 squared. So, it is a cubic minus a degree 2. Similarly, x1 x4 square minus x5 squared degree a cubic minus quartic uh, cubic minus quadratic and uh, then we ask uh, uh, the homogenize this is the Macaulay command homogenize f with respect to z and so apply the function f goes to homogenize f goes to z to the list flatten entries gen psi. Gen psi is a matrix, entries will give a list of lists of that matrix and flatten will give just them in one list. So, take this list and then apply this function and then construct the ideal. So, we got this ideal. Then we just ask for it to generate a Grobner basis uh, and show it. So, Grobner basis involves these two polynomials. And the s polynomial between these two, the multiply this by x to the x4 square, multiply this by x3 square and take the difference and that is uh, here, sorry x2 square, 
multiply this by x4 square and multiply the second polynomial by x2 square and then take the difference and that's that's inside here okay so this is uh, that's all okay and its leading term is not divisible by these so we need uh, that also okay so now let's ho let's homogenize uh, let's homogenize uh, these things okay and in that let's saturate z so we got this also okay. but if you look at we already sorry this is just i uh, just repeated this command without okay. so the reason is that so the reason is that uh, if you just take the hom homoge homogenizations of the polynomials then this polynomial x3 square x4 square z minus x2 z uh, x5 square z is there in the ideal which is just nothing other than just doing this polynomial calculation for this this pair for this it is nothing more than just doing the s polynomial calculation even if you had a z here and a z here which was for the uh, homogenization the s pair calculate cancellation would be the same and we would just get a uh, instead of this thing here we would just get z times this okay that's what uh, this thing here is so we need to saturate this since we don't want associated primes that correspond to components of i okay and so we saturated that and we got this one and so what really has done is we took a grobner basis in glex for this one then we saturated that so this one when we saturated we would get a z here that is what this is this one when we saturate we would get a z in for the second term z x3 square that's this term and this is homogeneous so when you saturate it it just comes when you homogenize it it just comes as it is so the idea is that if you take a glex uh, grobner basis with this with the variable uh, the homogenizing variable at the end then you take a grobner basis for that thing and just homogenize that we would get a grobner basis for the homogenization okay. and we do have to worry about saturating i mean uh, this uh, saturating the uh, the f1 tilde up to fm tilde if it's not a grobner basis okay so this is the algorithm and uh, uh, okay so this is how we translate problems about non graded things to graded things okay in the next lecture we will look at a couple more things about graded algebras the uh, graded uh, quotients of polynomial rings